And we are back for another productivity show. Hi, everyone. My name is Tan. I'm the founder and CEO of Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive at work and in life. And I'm Brooks, the operations director at Asian Efficiency. We're the host of the productivity show. Uh, super, super excited to be here today. Yeah, Brooks, we're going to be talking about how to get stuff done when you have kids at home. I know absolutely nothing about this, but I'm going to grill you here today. And we have a lot of people who are here with us uh, as we're recording live in front of the dojo. And uh, they have you know, kids as well, and they deal with other people at home. And uh, as everyone is kind of like tuning in right now, I know most, most of us are at home right now working from home. And I know many of you are struggling with this particular era because when we did a survey not too long ago, we had a lot of feedback on this particular topic. But before we start diving into today's topic, one of the things we always like to do is share some of our favorite resources as of lately. So the next three resources, we will have links to them in the show notes. So don't worry if you miss out on any of them. But the first one is called Wired In. So it's a wired sign that changes color to match your work status. So what's cool about this is if you have a home office or something like that, you can put up that sign. So if you're busy, you can make it look like it's red. And if you're you know, done with work or people can interrupt you, you can make it, you know, let's say green. So it's a really cool and subtle way to allow others around you to let them know whether you are busy, whether you're working, or whether they can actually come in and interrupt you. So that's something for you to check out. Next up is a uh, project management or cloud collaboration tool called ClickUp. So it's suitable for businesses of all sizes and industries. So if you're somebody who's looking for a new platform to have your team on, this is a viable solution for you to check out called ClickUp. And the third one is an app called Loom. This is a free app that allows you to record your screen and then also your voice and face so that you can instantly create a shareable video. So you don't have to like create like, you know, crazy videos and then export something and then upload it somewhere. Like this app makes it super easy to just press record, share something on your screen and then pass it on to someone on your team or someone else that you want to email uh, because it will have a link to that video right away. So, it's super easy, super fast, great for communication among team members and something that I use a lot as, uh, as well. So we'll have links to all of these resources in the show notes. So if you missed any of that, don't worry. Just go to theproductivityshow.com slash 298. And uh, if you're listening to this in a podcast app, you can just swipe and you'll see the links in there as well. All right, Brooks, uh, we're going to be talking about how to get stuff done with kids. So, uh, if you're new to working from home and you're not sure how to deal with kids while you're working from home, I know some of you who are watching this live or are, are in that camp. Uh, we're going to have something for you here today. I know some of you are also working from home, but have tried a bunch of different things, but nothing has maybe really worked for you effectively. There's something in this episode for you as well. And I know there's a small group of people as well who are watching. Maybe you are extremely Asian efficient already working from home with your kids. Uh, I promise you there's something for you here as well. So Brooks, um, where do you want to start? Yeah, well, this is, I think this is, uh, at least I hope it will be a very timely podcast because we're uh, recording the, I think the, the tips in this episode are, are pretty evergreen, I would say, um, but the, the circumstances that we're recording it in are pretty unusual in the sense that we're weeks into this whole COVID-19 quarantine situation. And I think a lot of parents uh, who are working from home and who have kids at home are, uh, starting to, you know, it, it's kind of fun all at first, you know, oh, everyone's together. It's so nice to spend a lot of time with the family. Uh, but those of us who are work, trying to get work from home, done from home, uh, it's uh, starting to get a little challenging. And we've definitely experienced that in my family. Um, and, you know, it's still not totally perfect. You may have heard, as I was speaking just now, a really loud thump from upstairs. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> so that was uh, one of my kids supposed to be quiet, but apparently not. Uh, so, you know, nothing's perfect, but we've actually in my family, uh, and I know uh, we're going to be sharing examples from a number of AE team members and examples from the community as well, um, you know, have been trying a bunch of things. And we've actually stumbled on some stuff that I think works pretty well. And, you know, there's those videos that have been going around 
there's that BBC video uh, that happened uh, years ago where the guy was doing a remote spot. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. He was doing a remote segment and then his, his kid came uh, waltzing in and then you see the, uh, I think it was his partner or something who came in to try to chase the kids and that video has been resurfacing. So we're all struggling with this. Uh, at once. So hopefully we'll be able to share some useful tips that will, that'll do that. Yeah, we have a bunch of really cool tips here today for you. And I'm also excited to announce that we are launching a new course that went live today. It's called Productive at Home. And it's our online training that we have going on for the next six weeks that will show you how to be productive working from home. And we've been working from home. Well, I've been doing it since 2009. I know you've been doing it since 2010. So we have a lot of experience when it comes to working from home. And we've trained all of our team members to be able to work from home and also dozens of clients over the years as well. And so if you want to check out this course, you can go to productiveathome.net. Again, the URL is productiveathome.net. It's our brand new course. And we have a limited number of spots available right now for people to accept to be part of this group training that we're conducting over the next six weeks. So if you want to be part of this, be sure to go right now to productiveathome.net. All right, Brooks, let's dive into today's training here today. Uh, So the first tip when it comes to getting stuff done at home while you have kids around is to create a fun learning environment. And what do we mean with this exactly? Well, obviously, this is going to really depend on the ages of the kids. However, one of the the tricky parts about trying to work from home and get stuff done at home is that for most of us anyway, our kids are also at home and it should theoretically be the school year, but none of the kids can go into school. So if you have a school age uh, child, then part of you being able to work from home is being able to have them working on the stuff that they're supposed to do and not be worried that they're spending all day long uh, sitting on the Xbox or or whatever it is that uh, they might choose to do. So you're trying not to get distracted by having them do the things that you want them to do. And this has actually been a, it was a struggle for my wife and I for sure, because we would try to, while school is getting up and running and they're getting up and running with remote learning uh, in Vancouver, uh, where I live, apparently they're going to try to get all the kids on Microsoft Teams. Uh, So that's going to be an interesting experience, uh, (laughs) having a class of six-year-olds and possibly not super tech-savvy elementary school teachers. And not to say elementary school teachers aren't tech-savvy because there are a lot of them that are, but a lot of them are not as well. So uh, (laughs) having this big, giant Microsoft Teams experiment should be fun. But anyway, uh, what we really struggled with is trying to get the kids to do what we wanted them to do. And uh, I wanted to share the uh, this great solution that's actually been working really well for us at, at home in our family. Uh, we're, we just started it this week and it's been going really great. It's night and day between the experience we had before and now. Uh, and it's actually a article that a dojo member, uh, Megan McCarney, hopefully I said that wrong, uh, wrote on LinkedIn and it's called Kanban for Kids. And so basically we're going to have a link to the article in the show notes Uh, It's a great article that takes through exactly how she does it. And then also a bunch of people have been sharing how they've been doing it as well. And basically, uh, she says something which I know a lot of parents would uh, relate to for sure, which is said, she says, the kids and I needed an approach for how to get through the next several homebound weeks without murdering each other. (laughs) And I think a lot of us, uh, (laughs) a lot of us working parents from home uh, probably are getting to that point. And she says, I've seen other parents post daily schedules, which if that works for you and your family, um, that's great. For us and our family, it didn't work out that well because we ended up trying to be, uh, you know, time master and task master. Uh, So she says, I've seen other parents post daily schedules, but I don't want to be a task and timekeeper all day, every day. So basically what you do is you create a time, a Kanban board. And if you're not familiar with that, We'll have some links to the show in the show notes to some uh, example, other examples in work, but it's basically taking this idea of agile scrum uh, and putting it into a family setting. So you have this big board. We have a big, I can share a picture of it in the show notes. We have this big board on the wall with a backlog uh, to do 
doing and done. And what you do is at the start of the day, you have a daily huddle. So just like we have at Asian Efficiency, we've talked about on the podcast before, we have a family huddle. And from the, the things in the backlog that maybe their teachers have given them or things we want them to do, like empty the dishwasher, get outside and have physical activity, that sort of thing. Uh, they choose, with our input, choose to put those items into the to-do column. Uh, and we just use sticky notes. We don't do anything digital. We just have sticky notes on the wall. And then as they're doing it, then uh, they just move it to doing and done. And when they're done, all the stuff that we all agreed that they would do for the day, then they can do whatever they want. If they want to play Xbox, if they want to uh, do whatever, um, that's totally fine as long as they've done the things that we've all committed them to do. So I was a little... I think, or I would say my wife was a little skeptical. Uh, I've seen it work really well at AE, this con general concept. Um, so, and the kids have taken to it really, really well. And in that article, uh, just in case you're thinking, you know, my kid is too young for a Kanban board, which I totally get. Um, in that article that we'll link to, they give some examples of using it with really young kids using um, pictures and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that has been really, really effective for us. And I highly recommend you check that out. I think at one point, once I have kids and a whole family and stuff like that, I'm just going to take all the Asian efficiency processes that we have for running our company and say, Hey, this is how we're going to run our household here today. We have a daily standup. We have our own Kanban board as well. And we're just going to run our household with like a retrospective and a review and kind of like demo stuff of what worked, what didn't work, and how can we how can we make things better? And uh, it sounds so nerdy and and weird at first, but I actually think when you introduce that kind of structure, it, it kind of makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have a review at the end of the day just to see um, what you know what's what's worked well. What should we change with input from them? Um, because <clears throat> the more ownership they have the more, of course, likely that they're going to stick to it. And there's just something visual uh, that I think kids and teenagers and tweens relate to of having these brightly colored post-it notes on the wall and they have the agency to move it to the different columns. And then sometimes we review it, uh, what, they're, what they've done uh, to, um, uh, to make sure that it's okay to move to done. Uh, so we, we check it over, but now we're not doing what we did before, which is be like, Hey, it's one o'clock. You're supposed to be doing math now. And then we have to kick them off whatever they're doing. And then it just becomes a thing. Now they know they have the ability to do whatever they want once they've done all the things that they committed to. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been great. I think this actually brings up a really interesting course or maybe like a like a master class at some point like productive families where we just introduce like in a way it's like having an operating system for having a really productive family and when you have these kind of things in place it, it, it's really no different than having successful marriages and relationships like they introduce all these different concepts like having the you know the adults have like a, a weekly meeting right where we just talk about stuff and talk through issues and that kind of stuff. And you can kind of take the same ideas and apply that to your family setting as well. And so if that is some, something that you would be interested in, I would love to hear that from you. So let us know either in the chat here, if you're listening live, or if you want to email us, just email us at podcast at Asian efficiency.com. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on that. Some other things, and this goes along with the theme of making it fun, is uh, other things that uh, my kids are older, so we don't really do this, but I could see it being really effective for younger kids as well, is they set up activity stations throughout the house for specific things to do. So like maybe the living room, this section of the living room is the reading station, and you do that for 30 minutes or an hour or what, you know, whatever for your kid. Then maybe in the kitchen, there's an arts and crafts section and you do some arts and crafts for a while. And then maybe you have uh, this other section with just little projects that they can play with. Maybe they're into Lego. So you have a Lego station and they do Lego for a certain amount of time. Having these activity stations breaking up the house since we can't go to classrooms, breaking up the house and, and making it, uh, having different stations is almost like different classrooms, different areas of a, of a preschool or something like that. I know Mary, who's a member of the Asian Efficiency team, she works from home, as does the entire team, like you said. 
what she does is she has uh, much younger kids uh, than I do. So what she does is she prints out uh, every week. She has activity worksheets for the kids. And then what she does is she themes the day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is reading day. Thursday and Friday is math day. Saturday and Sunday is like arts and coloring and just drawing stuff like that. And she kind of goes through it that way. So the kids know, kids kind of understand what it is they'll be doing that day. Um, so I thought that was an effective idea as well. So I hear that you play this fun game at your family dinner called 20 <laughs> questions. Can you, can you share that with everyone? Yeah. So like I mentioned, our school uh, in Vancouver is not quite up to uh, getting everybody on teams and getting assignments out yet. It's just kind of starting now. So we've been doing things like using Khan Academy for, uh, we'll link to Khan Academy for doing stuff like math and different online resources. But we started playing this fun game at, uh, at dinner uh, and it's something my kids drove. So we figured we might as well embrace it where they, we play 20 questions where you have to guess a person, place or thing. And then eventually we made, uh, my son just kept play, picking these uh, obscure uh, basketball players or hockey players or soccer players that no one else knew about. So we had to make a new rule. Okay, we're only doing places. Uh, so anyway, um, what I started doing is when we would talk about a country, then the next day uh, I'd have the kids write a, just write a little report, I guess you'd say, on that country. So for example, um, yesterday or a couple days ago, uh, somehow we got on the topic of Turkmenistan. So my younger son wrote a little report on Turkmenistan. Uh, today he's doing one on Japan. So these are just like trying to, trying to go with whatever they happen to be interested in and embrace that. Once the teachers start sending assignments, then we can get more, a bit more hardcore. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to ride out things that they're interested in that and then turn that into things that occupy their time, which then, uh, allows my wife and I uh, to work on the stuff that, uh, that we need to be working on. So that is tip number one here, and that is to create a fun learning environment, again, to help you, you and your kids to have something to look forward to so that they don't really interrupt you, and also to introduce some form of structure so that people know what to do and when to do things. So let's move on to tip number two here, and that's to create a routine for you and your kids. Uh, I'm curious to hear, Brooks, how have you done that in your family? Yeah, so one of the things we've done is implementing these things like uh, the daily stand-ups and uh, that sort of thing. So we're we're kind of routining it up a little more so the kids know that, like I mentioned, they're able to do what they want once they've done the things that they need to be doing every day. Um, other things that we've been doing is my wife and I have been, I mean, we naturally do this anyway, but... Uh, especially for her now that she doesn't have a commute, what we do is we wake up earlier than the kids, um, which for my, <laughs> my 15 year old is not a problem. Anyone who has a teenage teenager will know that they like to sleep in. So that's not a problem for him. Um, but we've been waking up early and then uh, doing as much work as we can before the kids get up. Uh, and then we have a little more time to engage with them, have our standups and stuff like that later in the day. So it's, it's about looking at the kind of schedules that the, the kids have and working around that. If your children are, are nap time kids, um, then uh, you, know, you, could, you have that opportunity as well. Put the kids down for a nap, get some work done, bust out the laptop or whatever until they wake up. Uh, another thing that I thought was really I thought was a really good idea. And I will link to this tweet, uh, I, something I came across on Twitter. I'll link to the tweet in the show notes. So the productivityshow.com forward slash 298 is, uh, it's somebody from the Todoist team, which is a task manager that we recommend here on the Productivity Show. And what they do is uh, both parents are working from home and they have young kids, uh, so much younger than mine. And so what they do is they break the day into two hour blocks. And each parent, the, both partners, will swap back and forth. So one parent will be working for that two hours and the other parent will be helping the baby and the, and the toddler or whatever the eight kids' age are. And then they'll swap. So they'll, 
they'll swap the other parent will work for another two hours uh, and then swap like that. And then they do the same thing, which Mary was talking about. They break the, the home into different workstations to keep the kids engaged. And I thought that was, if you do have a, a parent, of course, or a partner, not every parent, of course, has this ability. It's very, very difficult for single parents. I totally acknowledge that. Um, however, if you, if you do have both partners working from home and you do have younger kids where you can't just give them a Kanban board and say, Hey, come talk to us when it's done. Um, younger kids obviously need a lot more attention. So that is one solution is to have that routine of swapping back and forth. So that's uh, something that I think um, I don't have that experience personally, uh, but I can definitely see that being really good if you do have those young kids situations. From what I can tell here, as we are recording live from front of the dojo members, we have a lot of people sharing their thoughts and feedback on some of the ideas that we have here. And some of the things that I want to highlight here is that if you do have a partner, it's a lot easier to follow kind of like a task oriented schedule where you say, Hey, uh, this is the Kanban board. This is what we're going to do today. And then it's kind of up to you when you want to do stuff, right? Whereas if maybe uh, you don't have that kind of flexibility or luxury, then you got to figure out a way to create your own schedule, right? So for some people that might mean like waking up earlier before the kids, you know, or staying up later and then working on stuff. And so there's all these different challenges. So some people can create like a time-based schedule for you to work on stuff. So swapping every two hours and stuff like that. And for other people, it might be more task oriented or even outcome based. I'm thinking about, okay, if I need to get this one thing done today, it doesn't really matter what time I do it or how I do it or when I do it, as long as it gets done, that's fine. Right. So you might have to wake up earlier, stay up late. Uh, you know, anytime there's like a 30 minute window of opportunity, then you start working on stuff. Um, but you got to figure out at some point, some form of routine for you and everyone else in the family household. Um, Brooks, how do you do, uh, aside from the common board, was there anything else that you did with the kids before, like setting up to do list or, do you have a whiteboard or something or schedule activities with them? Like how would you do that in the past before the Kanban board? Yeah. So what we do is I've talked about on the podcast, how we have a family calendar and uh, I will, I will uh, post uh, on the, in the, again, in the show notes, the, the episode where we talked about that. i um, also talked a lot about this concept of routines and family, <clears throat> family schedules with uh, Julie Morgenstern, who's a well-known author. We talked, we talked about it on TPS 232. Um, so one thing that uh, we've always done with my kids is let them know, because it's always been me working from home. So my wife is a, a new addition to this, this issue, but we've always talked to the kids about the, the kind of goalposts, the routines that we know they're going to need to work on. And again, my kids are older, so this is more difficult, obviously, with a younger kid. Um, but if there's certain times when there's calls and stuff like that, where I know uh, that I will need them to do something like be out of the house or not be yelling at their friends playing NBA 2K while I'm down here trying to record something like that. Um, we'll talk about that. And then they've, cause, so they've kind of learned my routine over time. Uh, we've, again, with my wife being at home now, it's kind of added a different thing because she's uh, pretty high up in her career. So she's on Zoom calls all day long up in our bedroom. Um, so the poor kids are kind of <laughs> constantly uh, um, having to work around our schedules, but it's just, just the way that it is. Yeah, we also have Mary, uh, or actually, actually Marie. We have, we have lots of M's in our team, so uh, <laughs> sometimes it's a little confusing when we uh, reference certain team members. But we have Marie um, also. She's been with us since, I think, 2012, like eight years now. And so her son has really grown up over the years of you know being a really young toddler to now being like a young adult <laughs> almost. And uh, she shared with us how she kind of like evolved, how she worked with him and how she managed him and also raised him over time. Uh, do, do you mind sharing that story with everyone, Brooks? Yeah, Marie. Uh, Marie, well, first of all, Marie is about to have, uh, she's a, like you said, a super awesome member of our team. Uh, she is a teenager, the same age as my youngest son. Uh, she's about to have a uh, a new baby boy though. Uh, so she's going to be going on maternity leave, which is great for her, but not so great for us, but we are really excited for her. When I went to visit them in the Philippines, I brought her a little Canada hockey uh, baby t-shirt so that she'd be able to represent Canada over there. Um, but yeah, so what Marie does is uh, she, she does a more 
I think kind of similar to the Kanban, it sounds like um, she was telling us that what she does is she has a whiteboard with all of the, the to-do list things. So uh, it doesn't sound like she has specific time buckets, but she kind of, it's just a general routine for the day that's worked really well with her, for her and her son, which is, you know, get up, walk the dogs, um, doing the additional chores that need to be done, um, do home learning that's from a TV. And then once he's done those things throughout the day, then he's earned the, the, the right to play PS4 or be on his phone. Yeah, she's hardcore. She takes away his phone until she has it. I haven't done that, but I might end up having to. Uh, what I just do is I use the Eero app to block the Xbox uh, and, <laughs> and uh, block their phones, but maybe taking it away would work too. Uh, yeah. And then he, once that's done, he has the routine in the afternoon. And she's really found that the routine has helped keep everything peaceful. And again, she's working from home, so she needs to have the time and space to focus. So having those routines that everybody kind of knows about uh, allows her to, to be present for him, but also get the stuff done that she needs to get done. And I think it's also crucial to add to this section here that you have to find a way to establish some form of alone time for your work, right? So if, if you need some deep work, if you need to have some time for yourself to be able to focus, because certain things require a lot of focus and creativity to get work done. And so if you can figure out a way to create that routine into your life, that makes it so much easier then for you to actually get the outcomes and results that you're looking for. So as we were talking through the section here on creating routine for you and your kids, just don't forget, you also need some time to focus and get stuff done as well. And so if the schedule thing doesn't really work for you, figure out other ways for you to have that you know, alone time for you to work on stuff. So again, you can wake up earlier, you can stay up late. Um, anytime there's a nap time for kids, you know, you can use that and capitalize kind of on that opportunity. Um, especially if they're really young, right? So anytime there's a nap time, <clears throat> that's like your opportunity to really capitalize on that particular window of opportunity to say, hey, I need to quickly check email or like do this and that, right? And if you do have this significant other, then switching shifts or alternating blocks or something like that allows you to then also to focus and, and get stuff done. So again, it is a lot more challenging. And when I've worked with clients in the past, that's something I sort of like had to figure out and discover uh, through working with them. Right. And so eventually we did come up with a different set of solutions and some of them we are covering here today. But again, don't forget, it's not just about routines for them, right, for the kids, but also routines for yourself as well. All right, so that is tip number two here. Again, create a routine for you and your kids. So let's move on to the third one here, and that is to use visual cues to minimize interruptions. Like I just mentioned, everyone needs alone time, being able to focus, having that time for yourself where you say, hey, I know I'm not going to get interrupted for the next 30, 45, 60 minutes or so. And um, if you can shape your environment to allow that to happen, the better. Now, obviously that's going to be a lot easier when the kids are a little older, right? If you tell a 16 year old kid, Hey, uh, I need to focus. I need to record this podcast right now. Could you be quiet for the next 60 minutes? They kind of get that. But if you tell a toddler that, or like any uh, young kid that is, you know, under, let's just say seven or eight, that's a lot more challenging, right? And that kind of just reminds me of that meme that has been going around and also that YouTube clip where, again, you see that BBC correspondent talking seriously in a suit in his own office and all of a sudden the kid walks in and then it's either the nanny or his wife or partner is like chasing after the kid, trying to you know get the kid and the guy's just staying <laughs> professional the whole time, just you know, making his point come across while everyone else is obviously paying attention to the kid and the nanny or the partner. And so um, what are you doing, Brooks, when it comes to visual cues to kind of like minimize the interruptions? Yeah, the visual cues things is important because it especially de depends on your living situation. So for myself, it's not too bad because I'm down in a uh, office in the basement. So as long as my door is closed, uh, theoretically, they're, they're supposed to know uh, that um, I'm working and they shouldn't, you know, maybe they should text me if, to see if it's okay to come in. The 
It doesn't always work out that way, but they're generally pretty good. So that's kind of my signal. Um, it becomes much more difficult though, if say you live in an apartment and, or you live in a, you don't have an extra room. So you're working in the uh, living room or the kitchen or the bedroom. Uh, this is something that a lot of us are, are facing right now because we don't have an extra office. And, you know, maybe we used to, our advice used to be, oh, you know, just go to Starbucks or the library when you need to have focus time. Well, guess what? <laughs> None of us can go to Starbucks or the library right now. So we all need to make it work at home. Um, going back to uh, Megan McKerney, who uh, is, I shared the Kanban article before, uh, she posted something online, which I'll link to as well, is I thought a pretty clever situation. Um, there's, there's a lot of different solutions for doing this, but basically she just, has, she just made a thing with three colors of paper. It just looks like construction paper or something like that. I'm not sure. So there's red, green, and yellow. Um, I'm not sure what her working situation is, but uh, basically she just hangs it on the back of her laptop stand. And that's a signal to the rest of the family that, hey, I'm doing focus work right now. If it's red, um, you know, it better be really important if you come over or if it's green, that means come on over. I'm, I interrupt me all you want uh, and that sort of thing. So I thought that was a cool example. Uh, I also, in the show notes, I'll provide a link to a, a tweet I saw of, uh, I guess this guy must be on the more uh, nerdy engineery side of things. He hooked up a, an LED uh, dad's on a call sign with uh, two LEDs on it that he's, uh, hooked it up with uh, with some sort of automation thing, and it's uh, integrated with Telegram. So by uh, Telegram, which is a communication app, he can trigger which of those L LEDs goes on and off. <laughs> so I thought that was just a cool example of the type of solutions we're all kind of coming up with uh, in this situation. Uh, again, if you have really, really young kids, they're going to come try to bug you whether you have a red sign or not. So none of this stuff is perfect. Like, for example, I mentioned earlier about the closed door, and that's gen generally very, um, very effective. Uh, however, uh, last week while I was recording the podcast, uh, anyone who is watching that video on YouTube might have seen me constantly looking over to the left, and that's because my oldest son was sitting there asking if it was okay to take money out of my wallet for pizza. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> even though we have all these signals, uh, you know, we just got to accept in this situation, uh, sometimes the signals are going to break down, but uh, we all are doing what we can. <laughs> yeah, you make a really good point there because I don't think there's such a thing as like perfect in this situation, especially the younger the kids. Um, the, the more challenging it is and something that we kind of established as we are talking about this episode today. Um, but I think it's important for everyone to realize, hey, you know, you don't have to have perfect solutions here. We are making the most of whatever we have going on and what, what, what we have here. And so if that means that, hey, maybe instead of, you know, normally you might get like 45 minutes in to focus and do th certain things, maybe now it's, you know, 10 minutes and we just ha have to, you know, deal with the cards that we're given, right? And so nothing is perfect. So don't beat yourself up if something doesn't go according to plan, uh, especially for those of you who have like a certain Colby score and uh, it's easy for you to say, hey, you know, I need to, you know, stick to a certain way and be a certain way. Um, it's, it's really easy then to beat yourself up and, and get upset and, you know, have all these negative emotions going through you because something didn't go according to a plan or uh, you're not as easy to adjust along the way as you need to, which I think uh, from the sounds like of you, Brooks, and also talking to everyone else on the team and the clients that I've worked with, being flexible is really important when you are dealing with kids. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's all we can do. And this leads is going to lead into the next point that uh, we're about to talk about. But yeah, just this flexibility, this understanding that we're all in this situation together. Um, it's not ideal in any way, shape or form. Like when my kids were younger, um, I'm lucky enough that both sets of grandparents live in, uh, in this in the same city. So if there was a situation, uh, maybe I could get one of the grandparents to watch over them or something like that. And even that's, a, that doesn't work now. Not, we can't have our, ha, have family members, babysitters, housekeepers, all that stuff. Uh, we've all lost, um, not able to have those anymore. Um, so we're all just trying to come up with the, the solutions that we can. 
Yeah, going back to the expectation and perfection, uh, we are recording in front of Dojo members or productivity community. And if you want to become a member, you can always go to theproductivityshow.com slash dojo. And one of the members, we have Yoka from the Netherlands here. And uh, she said, yes, I'm just downshifting all expectations. I set my three MITs, my most important task for the day on work. And that's it. That's all I'm doing that day. And I have to remember to focus on the kids as well, because they uh, are also an additional three MITs, our most important task, right? She has another three kids as well. And I think that's a really good example here where, hey, maybe in the past you were able to get like five things done in a certain day. And maybe you have to downshift it to just three or maybe even downshift even more to say, hey, I'm just going to do one major thing every single day. It's something I believe we talked about on last week's episode where you set one major goal for the day. So if you're somebody who has a hard time sticking to a schedule, then this is like another solution to kind of work around that so that you can have you know, lots of flexibility around how you do things, when you do things uh, at a certain time, as long as you hit your outcomes. And uh, if, you know, if you used to be able to hit, you know, five outcomes in a day, I think it's re- more, more realistic now and probably a good idea to kind of downshift from there to say, hey, I'm working from home for the first time. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to having like certain people around me. It's so so much more challenging. It's so different, right? Because I don't have any coworkers. I can't collaborate a certain way. So uh, everyone's productivity has tanked in some shape or form, right? Especially if you made that transition. Now, for some of you, uh, you might be working from home forever already. And uh, now you have a partner and now you have other, you know, uh, expectations and, and limitations around you because now you can't go outside anymore and do other things. So everyone has been affected. So again, don't worry about being perfect. Uh, we can all adjust and be flexible around this and just uh, avoid the perfectionism inside of you if you have any of that. Oh, before we move on to the next tip, I do also want to acknowledge a conversation that's happening in the dojo chat as we're recording this right now. And that is uh, bringing up kind of like the, uh, the working from the, the stuck working from home parrot elephant in the room, which we haven't really touched on yet, which is, uh, you know, the question came up, what's the, uh, what's the best way to motivate kids or uh, allow them to get some if you just really need to get some stuff done or reward them for f- doing things. And I think a lot of us, we, I don't say we all, but many of us would love it having our kids have less screen time for sure. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that that is a, a really, really effective motivator for a lot of kids. It certainly is for mine and uh, for others as well. I've heard this as well. So using the iPad or the Xbox or whatever as this is your reward when you finish the stuff. Maybe in a, a normal world, maybe that wouldn't be, or if you just need to focus, have some time to focus on something and just get like a report done. So then you can uh, spend time with your kids after you get that done. Sure, maybe we all would love to not <laughs> use screen time as a crutch or a reward. I totally understand that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we're in this super unideal situation. And sometimes you have to use super unideal uh, tools to get things done when you need to get them done. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, that if you are feeling guilty about that, um, you know, just, just understand that, that we, uh, you know, we're all doing what we can. So, so it's okay. We're, we're giving you license that it's okay. If that ends up being the tool that you choose to use, uh, don't feel guilty about it. You know, when I was growing up, uh, the way to convince me and to motivate me to get stuff done was either you could go outside and play football or soccer with your friends. That was always a big motivator for me because I loved hanging out with my friends and playing outside with them. And obviously that's now something you can't really do. And then the other thing was uh, eating chips or candy. That was always another (laughs) big motivator for me. But then I kind of got chubby from doing that too. So I don't (laughs) recommend that necessarily for everyone. Yeah, but again, you got to do what you got to (laughs) do. All right. So that is, again, tip number three to use visual cues to minimize interruptions. All right. Let's move on to the fourth and final tip here for today. And that is to communicate your schedule with others. Um, As you're dealing with kids at home and navigating these crazy times right now, you're trying to figure out, like, how do I actually get stuff done? How do I focus and how do I do all these different things? 
don't forget that you have other people around you. Maybe you have parents helping you out. Maybe you have a significant other, but also let your coworkers know as well what you're dealing with so that they can be empathetic and accommodate uh, as well. Because if they don't know that you're dealing with all this sort of stuff, they can put all these crazy demands on you and ask you to do certain things when, you know, it's literally not possible for you to do that. Right. And so the more open you are about your situation, the more you communicate to others on your team, to your boss, to your direct reports and everyone else in your life, the more uh, flexibility you introduce into your life as well, right? So if people know that, hey, I have three kids at home right now, it's so hard to focus and I find it so much more challenging, you know, um, if you expect me to hit certain deadlines, uh, please forgive me to say, hey, you know, I, I might need an extra day or, or two to get stuff done. So be sure to communicate that to everyone. Yeah, and, and again, it's... it's um uh, keep, keep coming back to this because it's so true is you might be feel stressed out because maybe you're on a zoom call with your boss and your team members or other members of the organization. Like, I don't know, some finance director that you're need to have a meeting with or something. Uh, and all of a sudden you can hear your kids in the background or a kid walks behind you on the screen. Um, Chances are their kids are working, if they have kids, they're working at home too. And they're, they're in the exact same situation as you are. So uh, I, I think we can tone down the, the need to be stressed because, uh, because uh, somebody walks into our Zoom screen or whatever, your, or Microsoft Teams or something like that. Um, it's, it, it's just, uh, it just how, how it is. And, but again, it's, it's the communication piece as well. Uh, if we all kind of share, I need to knock off early today because I need to go do X, Y, and Z, then everybody knows. You know, there's this, we talked about this in a previous episode of this um, tension between wanting to be seen as present on our whatever IM system you're using uh, and the need to do stuff with uh, that comes with working from home. Um, and as long as you communicate and everybody knows the situation, generally people are, are flexible about that. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that BBC ad video and clip that we've been talking about earlier. I would have loved to have seen that guy just pick up his daughter and be like, Hey, well, my daughter's here. And, uh, on, on that note, I'm going to continue and you know, present uh, because, again, we're all in it together. We're all dealing with this. And, uh, and I'm sure other people who, who you work with uh, deal with the same challenges. And so even before you start the meeting, you can just say, hey, guys, uh, you know, I have like two kids at home right now. They're, they're awake. They might come in at any moment. You know, please forgive me if I have to mute for a second or if I'm gone for like two minutes or something uh, because everyone will understand. So don't be afraid to communicate that, you know, and uh, I think everyone is very empathetic about, especially the current situation of what, what we're dealing with. Uh, Brooks, have you ever had anything like that happen to you or did you ever <laughs> communicate with others of like how you had your schedule set up? Yeah, uh, well, this is definitely something we we all um, experience here at AE because, like we said, uh, we all work from home, and I think the majority of the kid the team has kids, uh, and some have young kids at home. Uh, so yeah, it's rarely a day goes by when we have our meetings and daily huddles that you don't hear uh, some kids in the background, or for those that don't have kids, sometimes some dogs in the background. I know my my son back like. 20 years ago when, when, uh, when kids were able to go to school, <laughs> feels like 20 years ago. Uh, my, my youngest son doesn't like leaving until he hears me say goodbye. So, but I forgot to mute, mute my zoom. So you'd hear this, bye dad, bye dad. <laughs> but I forgot I was off mute. So everyone on the team was laughing. So it just becomes like a, yeah, it just becomes a, a funny thing. Uh, one thing I do want to acknowledge also it, which we should have touched on really is, um, Carly in the dojo mentions that uh, those of us without kids uh, who are now working from home uh, are now working with people who, ha who uh, have kids. So even if you don't have kids, you might think to yourself, well, this doesn't really uh, impact me. Um, but really, uh, it impacts all of us because a lot of times, even if you don't have kids, you're now working with people who are working from home uh, with kids. So uh, she mentions that, uh, that it, it's even if you don't have kids, uh, the people who don't have kids do still, for the most part, understand. Um, so that is a great point as well. We should uh, acknowledge that we're all in this, even if we don't have kids 
kids ourselves. All right, and that is tip number four to communicate your schedule with others. So this was a really fun and hopefully productive episode for everyone here. Again, we'll have links to everything that we share today in the show notes. So you can go to theproductivityshow.com slash 298. I also want to remind everyone that we launched our brand new course today called Productive at Home that will show you how to work productively from home. So we'll share some of the stuff that we talked about today, but we also talk about like uh, different setups that you have to have at home, different tools that we recommend, how to build habits around your home and uh, productivity tips and strategies specifically around working from home. So if you are interested in that, you can go to productiveathome.net. Thank you all.